Wow, you made me sound really tap. Is that kawaii slang, tap? I feel like I heard that yeah, before. Yeah, it's just like you made me sound really epic there. I promise I'm just a regular human being. <laughs> I think I very much sit in my name, Maluhia. I'm very peaceful and I love just like gentleness. I love like sitting quietly in the kai. I love like farming, small restorative things that make places better. I already had pua on mm -hmm. and... Moana. Moana. Mm -hmm. So now you're the third. I got to get the other two. I feel like I'm Thanos, like in collecting the infinity <laughs> stones <laughs> the infinity for stones. Chef Girls Hawaii. <laughs> cool. Welcome to Keep It Aloha, a podcast that keeps it aloha by knowing when someone asks if you're goofy, that they're not asking if you are a Disney character or silly. I'm your host, Kamaka, and I'm goofy, but I'm not talking about my surfing stance. Today, <laughs> we have a regular guest, and now I'm talking about her surfing stance. Okay, that was the last joke. <laughs> I've been looking forward to this episode for a while now, so I cannot wait to talk with our amazing guests. But before we introduce our guest, I got to remind you about our Patreon at patreon.com slash kamakadias. We're an independent podcast funded by you and our sponsors. So if you want to support us for as little as $3 a month, go check it out. If supporting us with money is not for you, but you still love this podcast, please consider leaving us a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. It helps out so much with the algorithm and helps us get bigger opportunities in the future. We also have merch at keepitloha.com. Or if you want some cool local shirts that I wear on the podcast, just like this one, make sure you check out my other company, mahaloshoots.com, to get you a shirt just like this. Okay, let's introduce our guest. Our guest today is a native Hawaiian professional surfer from the island of Kauai. This Roxy girl is not just a force of nature on some of the world's most iconic waves, but is also a valedictorian, Stanford graduate, structural engineer and architect, an environmental activist, model, and most recently starred in Surf Girls Hawaii, which is a documentary series on Prime Video featuring five of the best young native Hawaiian surfers who are inspiring a new generation of women to jump into the ocean. As a daughter of a surfing legend, she inherited not only the lineage, but the determination to make her own waves in and out of the water. I am so stoked she's here today. Her name is Maluhia Hali'i o Kawa'i e Pili Aloha Kinimaka. Aloha Maluhia, welcome to the podcast here at Idea Studios. How are you doing? Aloha my <laughs> Um Wow, you made me sound really tap. <laughs> I promise I'm just a is regular. That is, that, is that kawaii slang, tap? Tap. I feel like I heard that yeah. before. It's just like you made me sound really epic there. Yeah. Um, I promise I'm just a regular human being. <laughs> well, your resume would say otherwise. I've been, I was trying to practice saying your whole name too. You I know it. On your Instagram, yeah. you have your whole name. So it's That's my a long whole, one. It's just the first name because Instagram doesn't have enough characters to fit. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. That's why. Yeah, that's why. What was that? That's, I don't want to call how many characters that mm -hmm. is. But anyways, I'm stoked to hear. It's great to meet you in person. I, I really loved the series on Prime Video with you and all the other girls. I already had Pua on mm -hmm. and Moana. Moana. Mm -hmm. So now you're the third. I got to get the other two. I feel like I'm Thanos, like in collecting the Infinity <laughs> Stones the Infinity for stones? Chef Girls Hawaii. That's so funny. So you're, you're the third Infinity Stone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we have a lot to get into and we always got to start at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Where are you from? Where are you grad? And what was it like growing up? Where am I from? Where am I grad? Where are you from? Where are you grad? Oh, okay, and what okay. was it like growing up? Okay. Wait, eight brothers and eight sisters, yeah. not combined. No, not combined. So 16 siblings. Yeah. How did they get it so e even like that? Eight and eight. Well, maybe law of large numbers. <laughs> Statistics guess. moves to 50, 50. See, like this is the Stafford graduate. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. He would take you out surfing at a young age, mm -hmm. go what, diving, swimming, mm -hmm. all that. Yeah. All, all just water. Because he was a waterman of the year, right? Yeah. I yeah. mean, some people learn better in the classroom. Some people learn outside of the classroom. Life yeah. is the greatest teacher. You yeah, know? it the is. The ocean, the land. There's so much that you can learn from that. I've learned way more outside of the classroom than I ever did. I agree. Even like going to one of the, uh, what people would think is like one of the best knowledge, Western mm -hmm. institutions in the world for learning. I think I've learned more from the ocean yeah yeah for sure for sure do you do you remember your first time surfing okay. yeah cool oh mm -hmm. so you toes to the nose from the start <laughs> huh? yeah i guess so i'm 30 years old still trying to get toes to the nose <laughs> no you do helicopters you're, yeah and hurt myself. you're better than you let on <laughs> yeah and hurt myself doing it so yeah i still gotta practice yeah so 
growing up on Kauai is such a small town. Mm -hmm. You know everybody. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of opportunity that seems within sight. I guess I would say, mm-hmm. you know, coming from a small town, it seemed like people just get a job. You work at Walmart or mm-hmm. I don't know, one of the offices over there for the doctor's office. Mm-hmm. But what what else is there besides that? You know? Okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I, from a very Hawaiian perspective too, you know, the the land is equal or even greater than us. You know? Yeah. So absolutely. we we, we got to we got to put it first. So when people like Mark Zuckerberg, whatever, come with their yeah. millions, billions of dollars, however much he has. And they just buy up the land. They they don't understand why that's not Pono. Yeah, you know? they, I think it's where they were never oh, okay. sure if they were gonna get to read. It's like in perpetuity. Yeah, of in perpetuity, whatever. they will have the Aina back, which okay. is freaking awesome. Oh, but, super cool. Well, I mean, he just had mm-hmm. to learn the hard way. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta get cracks. Sometimes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gotta get cracks so you can get tap. <laughs> yeah. That's the new motto <laughs> on Kauai. <laughs> uh, I catch more cracks yeah. than those <laughs> than getting tap. I think. Yeah. How many so how many siblings do you have? I just have one sister. Just you and your sister. One little sister. Okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, you, you, I've seen videos of you two together and mm-hmm. your dad as well. Mm-hmm. So I'm guessing you guys are really close on that. I was gonna yeah. say that's like your sister. <laughs> yeah, she. If she and I were a whole person, we would like be indestructible. Yeah, you almost look like twins. We almost do yeah. look like twins. She's a little shorter than me. <laughs> Dead giveaway. Just yeah. joking. Um, mean things like uh, I'm I don't sure, know what yeah. the terminology is, but I know what you're talking about, but yeah, I don't yeah. know the classifications. Yeah, yeah. So she's anything creative. Like my sister mm-hmm. is so good with that. She and she has been since we were little. Nice. And you're more analytical. Yeah, I think so. Mm-hmm. More like math, science stuff came easy to me. Mm-hmm. But like, if you ask me to like. <laughs> draw something yeah i'm yeah. like i'm the person that gets the ruler and <laughs> yeah yeah well i've been stuck on stick people since <laughs> second grade or however old you are when you draw stick people but so who was a better surfer you or her gosh <laughs> i don't know it depends on how you define what what is better surfing you know whoever like, has the most fun yeah so, yeah. yeah if it's whoever has <laughs> the most fun Probably my name. <laughs> no, <I'm joking. laughs> nah, nah. Um, it just depends. My sister's very stylish. Like her surfing almost looks mm-hmm. like more like dancing. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think my surfing is more powerful. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I like to like attack. Yeah, yeah. I, I think I because I'm like real yeah. mellow. That's where I let out all you, my. <laughs> <laughs> you take it out on the ocean. No, no. Yeah. I don't take it out on the ocean, but it lo- allows me to channel it out. Oh, okay. Yeah, That's yeah. a good way to put it. Yeah. Awesome. So at what point in your life did you you get really into surfing and you knew that it was going to become your life? Here. That's interesting because Moana said a similar thing. About yeah. She feels, she feels like we take a lot from the ocean. Yeah. But we don't give that much back. Yeah. And like making money off of the ocean through surfing yeah. or whatever it yeah. is. It feels a little, I guess, guilt guilty yeah it's nice that people are educating them about that and i think the one good thing about social media is that there's almost this social pressure to do good yeah you know whether it's virtue signaling or not just because you're under the the microscope especially if you have a lot of followers you know you have a big platform people are wondering okay what are you going to do to help what are you going to do to give back yeah it happens all the time yeah yeah so it's kind of like um I try to just do like small stuff that I feel like I can do to give back, whether that's like shooting, trying to shoot a campaign with Roxy where my sister uses her knowledge of Olala Hawaii to like make this awesome short film where it's in Olala Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Because when we were little, I didn't see anybody doing stuff like that. And I was always like, I wish I could see that. Mm -hmm. I wish I could see a surfer that looked like me and my sister. Um, I mean, there was like Megan Abubo. Anti Rel, there are some awesome, absolute tap hammers. <laughs> no, no. But yeah, I think it's it's really cool. And now with Pua and Eve, like it's like all continuing and it's they're even better than us, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. That's I I I love that you said that because I didn't grow up surfing. I mm-hmm. didn't really follow everything until maybe a couple of years ago. Mm-hmm. So to see people like Eve and Pua surfing at a high level, but also promoting mm-hmm. Olelo Hawaii. Yeah. So cool because yeah. that's something I, I always thought about with the athletes that I see. Even the guys in the NFL or the UFC, mm-hmm. it's super cool that they're representing Hawaii. But nobody ever talks about the 
the culture, not not the culture, the the language, mm-hmm. and or, and or they don't necessarily, I guess, pro, promote it as much as I would want to. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Not saying that they ha- they have an obligation to, because mm-hmm. maybe they just don't feel comfortable mm-hmm. doing that. But I've I've always wanted to see more. I agree. More representation in terms of the language. Mm. And then it's the Roxy girl. Yeah, yeah. I know. <laughs> I know, <laughs> problematic AF. But um, they they don't give you that space. So a lot of the times I think you have to make it yourself. So mm-hmm. if they ask you a question, you almost have to ignore it. And mm-hmm. <laughs> start, at least this is what my sister taught me over time. She's like, mm-hmm. whatever they ask you, just like insert insert how you how you actually want to answer. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And that, that comes, I think, just with experience and age too. Definitely. Yeah. So let's talk about that that mm-hmm. uh, series a mm-hmm. little bit because I watched. I remember learning about it, mm-hmm. and I saw. I was super excited. My friend Matt, I surfed with him, mm-hmm. Uji. So yeah, yeah. He said he worked on. He did some of the underwater. Shots yeah, and stuff. he did. Yeah. Um, there was like they had us try to remake a blue crush uh, yeah. shot underwater, but no, Matt nailed it. Yeah, Matt's yeah, awesome. Yeah. He's in Tahiti right now with Ha'a with Ha'a and, and Nani. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so fun. I was I was surfing with Matt. That's mm-hmm. um, Matt and my friend Rachel. Mm-hmm. The um, when I hurt my ribs, so it was a it was a fun day though. Before that, when you did your helicopter, and we we all got hurt that day. I think no, I think Rachel hit her. She Charlie horsed her thigh or something, and then I don't know what happened to Matt, but I think he was just he was just getting aggro because these guys at Rock Piles just kept hogging all the waves or something. So his his feelings mm-hmm. got hurt. I think that's what it was. Yeah. But uh, that that uh, series, I left yeah. a review on IMDb too. It's mm-hmm. one of my first di- reviews. Mm-hmm. It was so amazing. I, I loved watching it. One, because I'm really into surf now. So I, mm-hmm. I love following it. Mm-hmm. Two, because I love seeing the representation of all of you guys. Mm-hmm. And three, I think it was just so cool to see the behind the scenes of the lives that you have and like mm-hmm. the struggles that um not just the successes the struggles that a person like you have to go through during the 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 tour it's in reference crazy. to the injury to my knee well, injury or just and then like general? even the losing the winning the training yeah like <laughs> man, I have, every time i watch it because I, I had Dwayne on the podcast too yeah oh that? my I'm goodness like, Dwayne, <laughs> you're so scary <laughs> <laughs> they made him look like I think more intense than he actually is. Yeah, yeah. Um, their <laughs> dynamic felt very pressured, but I don't. It's not like that at all. Yeah, no, yeah. he's such a he's such a cool guy. But I mean, this he's a ham. Like, yeah, he you, is. I wouldn't want to disappoint him. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, tell us about your experience with that. So it was like uh, just like randomly anything about it. Yeah, well, I mean, so how how did that come up? <laughs> oh, spoiler alert! Spoiler. <laughs> Um, that's going to be filmed this winter. So hopefully they have more resources to show. Yeah. More. Yeah. Well, I mean, I know it, it was trending on net, uh, not net, uh, prime video. Yeah. It was like in the top five. Yeah. Maybe? It was like in the, I think it was in the top five for like a week and a half. Yeah, and then it, it was in to top three or something. Yeah. And then it was like in top 10 for a while. Yeah. So like. That's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty cool. Um, it was kind of weird to suddenly go places and then have people know uncomfortably much about your life. <laughs> or you're like, they just random people like, oh yeah, how's your knee? <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. They were like, oh my gosh, how's your knee? Um, which was, it was cool. Like it's, it's, it's cool to connect with people that you don't know um, or to have someone feel like they identify with something about you or like to see you overcome something. And so they can overcome that too. Um, yeah. It was just a little weird for me. Yeah. And I'm sure like Pua and Moana and Eve would say the same. Yeah. I mean, yeah. totally new territory, right? Because yeah. you, all, you all have a following on social media, mm-hmm. but being recognized on social media versus being known for something in real life or that surfing or like a TV show, which is like way bigger. Like people, people come up to you and they, they recognize you and they, they talk stories and they ask you questions and they... Like you said, a lot of your privacy was, I guess, yeah. ripped away. So people know about you. So it's like this person's like, um, "Hey, Malia, how's it going?" And you're like, "Do I know you?" Nah, I'm always friendly to people. No, no, the, the, yeah. that's what people do. So, for example, yeah, like, yeah. people oh, come up you, to me yeah, and yeah. they'll just be like, "Hey, Kamaka." Yeah. 
And I'm like, in my head, I'm thinking, do I know this person? Did yeah, I meet them before? you're sort of. I, I, like, I wish they would just say like, oh, hey, I'm this. I like your podcast or something like that. Sometimes mm-hmm. people just come up and they're just like, mm-hmm. they talk to you like they've known you. Yeah, yeah, they do. And I have to try to decipher, do I actually know this person? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but it's like, it's, it's, it's both like a blessing because you get, you do get certain, um, like privilege from people recognizing you, like, but then you also, yeah, you have to trade your privacy away for that. Yeah, so, definitely. But if it's, I have to trade my privacy away to uh, bring the lahui up, that's fine with me. Yeah, I think yeah, you, yeah. Did, you did a great job, you and all, all the girls. It made me very proud to be Hawaiian. Oh, thank yeah. you. And I'm I'm not a female surfer, but it made me proud. And I, I, I'm sure the young girls coming up, guarantee they were inspired. Yeah. For sure. I, I hope so. Okay, so. yeah. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. No, I, I, I loved it, but there were, there was a, a part, I think it was like episode two or three, mm-hmm. where it made me really sad to see you get hurt. Oh yeah. With my knee. And that was when you were just training, right? Or it yeah. was like practicing was, the day before. Yeah. Was that Florida? Yeah. 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 So it was basically, Seattle, I know. ah, yes, I, um, <laughs> absolutely not. Absolutely just rub not. some dirt on it. <laughs> yeah. No, no. They were like. And then you, you, I remember you saying that you're thinking if you need to get surgery or not. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I, yeah, that's because, a cool moment. Yeah. Yeah. Cause when you know it's, it's going to go to your friend, like it just makes it that much better. Definitely. Yeah. So I've had some questions about, yeah. uh, from Instagram about your need, people asking how mm-hmm. it is, mm-hmm. what's the update, mm-hmm. injury report. Oh, injury report. Yeah. Um, it's much better now. Mm-hmm. There is a muscle that's called the VMO which is just here. Mm-hmm. Um, or it's like, I can't, I don't know if I can lift my knee up, but <laughs> there's a muscle called the VMO. That muscle, the density of that muscle indicates like the health of your overall knee for my specific uh-huh. injury. So I think like a hundred percent density is like regular and healthy. And I think mine is probably like 70 percent mm. density, which is not exactly ideal. Which is definitely not valedictorian. <laughs> no, no. Want. But you know what? C's good degrees. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> so yeah. I'm get, I'm about C. I'm a C plus at okay. the moment. Um, the lowest grade she's ever had in her life, guarantee. No. <laughs> we can talk about that later. I'd love to talk about that. Um, we can just start longboarding and going straight. <laughs> no. Yeah, canoe's a great spot oh to do that. Oh my gosh, yeah. I know. <laughs> I actually love longboarding. It's like, and I love Aliyah too. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, I feel like it's, like I said, it's the most fun. A lot, I, my friend Chris Miyashiro, I don't know if you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he does sol- awesome art. Yeah, solid guy, mm-hmm. artist. He's a great surfer. He took, he let me use his alive before and it was the weirdest feeling ever. Really? Because I just felt like I could, I felt like I was floating in outer <laughs> space trying to just stay on the board. You're, it's almost like the amount of paddling is like playing water polo i think it's it's like yeah there's nothing under me i felt like i was just paddling and but also trying to hold the board Mm -hmm. underneath me so the people that can ride those i'm just so impressed yeah it's crazy so you you hurt your knee you Mm -hmm. couldn't compete anymore you still you still in the show supporting people Mm -hmm. that's really cool Mm -hmm. well they're all my friends so i I want them to do good that that's the coolest thing is to Mm -hmm. see the camaraderie between all of you Mm -hmm. and the genuine friendships yeah and jokes and all that yeah i love i love seeing all that was it was it weird knowing that you're it wasn't a reality tv show like the kind we're thinking of Mm -hmm. like jersey shore but it was you know reality in the sense of your lives your actual lives and emotions and stuff like that so how how was that that whole process and what was your biggest takeaway from it all yeah i know know, as an athlete i've been hurt so much so many times in my life not to that scale i mean um i had wrist surgery oh oh, yeah i can see your scar yeah Yeah. so for pretty much for a whole year i was out not being able to do anything and i'm not a professional athlete at your level but i'm a very active person yeah no anybody who who's active who needs to move yeah to like sudden face is gone what am i doing (laughs) like trauma right there a little bit a little ptsd yeah, no, nah, no, nah, but not, um, uh, not, not so bad. But it just made me appreciate surfing so much more. Like it could be taken away from you, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. That's a that's a really cool takeaway that you. I'm sure you reflected a lot and thought mm-hmm. about all of that. So mm-hmm. yeah, that, that's cool that you you thought about that. When when I saw 
Aaron Rodgers. I know you don't watch football, but he's, mm-hmm. he was quarterback. I don't know if you know who Aaron Rodgers I, is. No, I don't. One Sorry. of the greatest quarterbacks. But <laughs> yeah. he went to this team called the Jets. Mm-hmm. And he was Oh, no, wait. I do know this person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's okay. kind of famous because he's yeah. like, took t- t- ayahuasca and whatever. Yeah, so I do know. know I have seen this person <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. He's, he's one of the... He's a future Hall of Fame quarterback. Mm-hmm. They had a series called Hard Knocks where they document certain teams. Mm-hmm. They documented the Jets, the New York Jets because... It's a it's a big thing that Aaron Rodgers was going there. He's going to save the franchise because mm-hmm. they've been bad for so many years. Mm-hmm. So the, the series was great. I watched it. Everybody's super hyped. First game, mm-hmm. this was just a couple weeks ago. I think it was like the f- fir- first drive that he was in, like maybe the fourth or third or fourth play. Mm-hmm. He gets tackled and then he gets up and he sits back down and oh, then no. he has to get taken off the field. And then later on, we find out the next day that he tore his Achilles. No, that's one of the worst ones. Yeah, too. and then he's he's thirty nine years old or forty, something like that. So that's like, like that's a, a tail end of his ender. career. Yeah. So it made me think about you, how you were you're training for this thing so long, and like you had your your other career. You know, you mm-hmm. focused on school. You came back to the sport. Mm-hmm. Like he was about to retire. He came back to the sport. Yeah. And everybody was super stoked. And then the first just play, injury just right away. Injury. And that's like a nine month, maybe a year recovery. Yeah. So it could end his career. Yeah. But then I just saw a couple of I- interviews with him and he said, he, he gave some good one out on, you know, possibly he's not done and mm-hmm. um, just some, some good. I, I love when people talk about like strong mentalities and stuff. Yeah. And that's what it seemed like he has. And I'm sure you're, mm-hmm. you're at that point too, but it just, it, as just a human on an emotional human level, it just makes you feel so sad for that people because you know how hard they work to get there. Yeah. And seeing it being taken away in the first the first opportunity that you get, it sucks. I, it's so hard. Yeah. I have gonna do. Yeah, you kind of yeah. attach your identity to that sport or whatever. A little know. bit. There, I mean, there. There's a bunch of athletes that I. I've seen mm-hmm. this have multiple injuries and it, it always sucks seeing it, but seeing a good comeback is even better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so there comeback was, season. Yeah. Comeback season for mm-hmm. sure. There's, um, I was actually really impressed. I don't know if you follow surfing that intensely, but they just had the WSL finals, um, oh. at lower trestles. So it's like, um, yeah, I saw one. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't watch it though. Oh, that's, that's seeing stuff like that is like pretty cool inspiring, yeah yeah inspiring yeah so you you think you'll be able to get back to yeah for to, sure to level especially by the time they start filming again yeah for sure okay i think i'm already like like i said like 70 yeah, percent yeah. back um yeah okay. i think the biggest maybe <laughs> maybe we'll scale it back <laughs> yeah <laughs> um but definitely there was a huge mental hurdle to overcome in terms of like i can do that same movement with or, my yeah. body and it's yeah. not going to happen again like trusting your body trusting your knee um, or trusting whatever you injured. Yeah. It just, you have to kind of just go for it. Yeah. Yeah. It's scary getting yeah. over the, the mind is one thing that if you can train your mind to yeah. be strong, you, you can accomplish anything. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I truly believe that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I I hope that we get to see you ripping again on the, the next season of, of Surf Girls. Yeah. yeah. I think, it, I think you for will. That. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Okay. Then I can say, oh, I know her. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I can I say oh I know him <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah well, so going back to schooling yeah because that's also a big part of you and mm-hmm. it, it's really s- surprising I would say it's not super common to see somebody who's a professional surfer or s- that surfs at a very high level also excel outside of the water in the classroom mm-hmm. there's almost a stereotype right yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so you're you're just breaking that all down, <laughs> which I think is super cool. Same with Cliff Capono, mm-hmm. who was also a Hilo boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he his family lived across one of my best friends, so mm-hmm. I, I knew I knew the sisters growing up, and I actually oh, yeah. just met Lauren Cliff. and Aloha. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I well, I've met Cliff before, but I finally got to talk story with him three months ago, maybe at an event on Oahu when he was here. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know he Olelo Hawaii's. Yeah, he does. That's he, so cool. he and how Nani speak Olelo Hawaii like almost consistently. In yeah, he learned he learned as an adult, which yeah. is super cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, then, so we were just r- talking stories, straight Portuguese style, but in Hawaiian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you are always interested in just learning in general. Yeah, you're just an avid learner. 
I think so. Yeah. I I just spend a lot of time watching things, not in a creepy way. Oh, like yeah, in a super creepy way. She just hey, if you feel somebody's been watching you, it's probably her. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there's like um watching her make you things. Yeah, maybe that's why. I was yeah. watching my name make stuff. Yeah. So um, you you were the valedictorian of your high school? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And then you decided to go to Stanford, which is one of the top colleges in the US. What was that 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 period in your life like because I feel like it's not very common to to see native Hawaiians excel in education. There's I went to a Hawaiian immersion school called Navio Colonial Pool on the Big Island. Mm-hmm. And I think we have one guy like maybe many years before me who went to Stanford and mm-hmm. they talk about him. Mm-hmm. Uh you probably know his name, I don't know. I don't know. What is um, his what is his name? He might have been older than me. Older, older, yeah. yeah. But I don't know, maybe he's in like some Hall of Fame of Stanford people that's Native Hawaiian. I don't know. We have like, uh, if you go to Stanford, there's the Native American Cultural Center and they have like a uh, like a Hall of Fame of students. Okay. But they're mostly like kupuna now. Oh, okay. Like they're like okay. 60, 70. So yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I can't remember his name, like Holo something maybe. Mm. But anyways... You follow you follow in that footsteps and it, it's super impressive. But did you feel comfortable doing that? What did it feel like you felt out of place? Or? So the re- Especially if you're ethnic. Especially there's so yeah. many scholarships and I mm-hmm. I didn't do any scholarships when I was, that's why I had fifty thousand dollars in student loans. Oh dang. Because <laughs> I didn't know about that. And yeah. I, I wish I Okay, I, I guess I knew about it, but I mm-hmm. wasn't so keen on applying because mm-hmm. I was like oh, I don't want to waste time doing this it's a lot of effort but then you think about like regular jobs say you work a job you're getting mm-hmm. paid 15 dollars an hour you make a couple thousand in what a couple months you can just apply for a scholarship take a day to work on that and you can get tens of thousands of dollars yeah so I didn't think like that yeah well young. you have to have somebody yeah. on a whole girl <laughs> Kapala high school grad sup guys Stop. that's the tap yeah <laughs> no 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 um but I think my mom so that that's your story about yeah, your bad. Grade. That was my. <laughs> so then I was just like, um, like Definitely. year two, three, and four. Yeah, well, yeah. Th- that's a testament to sh- to show that sometimes you got to figure out how to do it wrong before you can do it right. Exactly. You got to fail to succeed. Exactly, and yeah, I mean, just look back to the Ahupua system. Yeah, exactly. we all work together. Yeah, you know, the fishermen help the farmers, the farmers help the fishermen. Yeah, not everybody did everything on their own. You know. Yeah. The women help the men. The men help the women. It was all a collective, you know. And that and that's that's where the modern burnout started. Yeah, people trying to do that. Yeah, <laughs> and like what I will. Uh, and it seems like it's it's almost cool to brag about all the hard work you're doing, how yeah. little sleep you get, how how much you're grinding and whatever. Yeah. Like honestly, I don't want to be doing that. No. <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes, but. I'd rather be surfing. I'd rather be watching TV shows or whatever it is. But I, I, I'm at the point in my life where I know what I have to do. Yeah. I know that it's not. It's it's kind of seasonal now. It comes in waves, right? And life is life is awesome because like you never know what's what's gonna come. You know, it's like surfing would be boring if all the waves were the same. You know. Yeah. Oh, except I no, that's actually true. I took the that back because the wave pool. I was thinking that. Well, people have that comment. You know, they're like. <laughs> Oh, like once all the waves are the same, the level of talent is so high. How do you split yeah. hairs, you know? Um, okay. I would agree too. I think surfing's more interesting. I think life is more interesting with variety. Yeah. Except at the wave pool, maybe. If Except you like that. If you like pool. that. Some people like routine. I like the wave yeah, pool. Yeah. I didn't, I've never been to <laughs> Kelly's wave pool, but I went to Waco. I thought it was real fun. Yeah, Something yeah. different. Yeah. I've been on a wave and I've been in a pool, but I haven't been uh, on the wave pool. Yeah. So I, I'll work there. Maybe if I have Kelly's later on one day. You can invite me. <laughs> that would be super cool. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a quick shishi break and mm-hmm. we'll get back with the social media fan questions. Cool. Right on. I want to I re- I wanna go in person. I've never seen big waves in person. I've never it's been crazy. to one of those competitions. I've only been to one and that was the the bowls competition a couple months ago. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the one that... Uh, I don't know who the girl won, but Moana and pool were in the oh, finals. Oh, Keala. Yeah, Keala Tomoda, I yeah, think, won. Yeah. And then I think Moana got second and Eve, yeah. Eve got third. Yeah. And, and it, the guy was um, oh, Zeke's friend. Uh, Zeke has many friends. The best, he's like one of his best friends. Uh, like the surfer, oh, why can't I think of his name? 
Uh, we all know him. I'm tweaking. Uh, I don't. I'm, is it bad? I it's didn't like his, pay like attention his, to the his best surfing finish. friend. Uh, I don't know. I thought Zeke was like a lone wolf. <laughs> he is though. <laughs> uh, oh, what's his name? He he's a coach for. I think he coaches Eve or um, somebody. Uh, I think I don't know if Eve's coach my coach might be bots. Okay, maybe I think somebody else. Oh man, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. Mm. He's dating uh, the fighter. Oh, Ka- um, wait, what? Cur- Curran, I oh, think. Oh, Keanu Asin. Keanu yeah, Asin. Keanu Asin. Oh. Sorry, Keanu, if you're listening to this. I don't, I no, no, no. I, I was name. bad there too because I didn't pay attention to the men. <laughs> Sorry. No, yeah, so he won that one. And then, yeah. yeah, so that was the only surf competition I've ever been to. And that was because I wanted to watch it before Moana came on. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just so I can understand, because mm-hmm. it, it was just, it, I can imagine how frustrating it is being a surfer. And like, if if there's no waves, then you can't really do anything. Yeah, it's yeah. really, surfing is very, it's both strategic and it's athletic. Mm-hmm. And it's also endurance. Yeah. It's like playing water chess. Yeah, yeah, really, yeah. Like water chess. Yeah, so anyways, I, I've never seen like the big waves out on North Shore, so... I want to go do that. So whenever the the next big one is, or mm-hmm. like pipe, or mm-hmm. one of those ones, I, I want to go check it out. That'd be awesome. Yeah, Ehuka is really beautiful to watch if you've never seen it. Huge too, because okay. it's like one of the only waves that breaks like how it does, like a giant barrel, really close to shore. Usually waves like that are on like fringing mm-hmm. reef, so really far out. But that one you can be on shore, and there's like a ten footer like twenty oh, feet out from you, crazy. and you're like whoa. Okay. Pretty crazy. It's it's worth watching. It's like okay. the full mana of the ocean just unloading on you. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I can't wait. Just got to find parking there. It's crazy out of <laughs> yeah. traffic over there. Well, you can park behind Moana in her spot for sure. Okay. I'll, she I'll would probably let her. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's where all the hamas park. <laughs> yeah. By the Volcom house. All right. Well, mahalo everybody for the social media fan questions. Make sure you leave some for our next guest and maybe your question will make it on the podcast. So we're coming to the back end of the podcast mm-hmm. and I like to ask all of my guests when they come on mm-hmm. about aloha mm-hmm. and the meaning of keeping it aloha and mm-hmm. how in your life do you keep it aloha? For kindness sake. <laughs> yeah, for kindness sake. Yeah. I, I think the beautiful thing about our culture is that we're always thinking of others. Yeah. We're always thinking of the consequences of our actions onto others. Yes. Yeah. From the land leaving rubbish on the ground, like how is that going to affect the land or maybe even the people who are stewarding it, they have to go pick that up. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it's, it's always this communal mindset that we have Yeah, is how are we going to help out our Lahui instead of just make it take a couple steps back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think not being afraid to ask yes. is such a strength. Yes. And, and also not being ashamed to but you gotta, otherwise you just end up struggling like yeah. lonely kind and that's not yeah. that cool. I don't know is a perfectly fine answer. Yeah. Yeah, because especially when you go to places or if you're learning a language, for example. Yeah, I know. Saying, yeah. I don't know, or can you slow down? Can you repeat that? It's totally fine. Because mm-hmm. we, we were talking before the podcast uh, about, I was asking how your Hawaii language class is. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I don't want to respond because I'm shy. I'm shy. Really. Yeah, I know. I got to not. But that that happens anytime you learn a language that that's the thing that that holds you back because on the other side of that is growth. Yeah. And it's hard to get to that point because, you know, it's it's embarrassing when you, you know, you you think you know something or you're starting off and you're, you're talking like you're a kindergartner, but you're 20 something, 30 something or 40 something year old adult mm-hmm. and you sound like a kindergartner to them. You know, but yeah. that that's how it is in, in all languages. Like when I learned Spanish or Malagasy, mm-hmm. when I'm talking to somebody, I probably f- sound like a little kid, you know, mm-hmm. just trying to say small words or even in Hawaiian, o vai ko inoa, yeah. you know, but you got to, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. But it is hard. Like I get you. I know because even, so I, I learned Spanish in college mm-hmm. and I still remember a lot, but mm-hmm. anytime I'm around, Spanish speakers, I get nervous. Yeah. And I want to practice Spanish so bad. But then I always stop myself because I don't want to be say something and they think that I speak and then I, I can't and then respond properly. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I know that feeling. 
Yeah. And it's it's scary, but you don't know how to speak yeah, English. Yeah, yeah. I never yeah. shame them. I'm always like, oh, yeah. And I like very simply mm-hmm. respond that they can understand. Yeah. So why would why would I assume that somebody's going to be mean to me for That's not, not getting it perfect? Point. Yeah. Such a good point. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Because usually when you hear people that that speak like broken English, usually we, we have the tendency to be like, oh, they don't know how to speak English or kind of judge them. Mm-hmm. But then they're speaking another language and most people don't even speak another language. Yeah. Right. So that's actually more impressive than anything. Yeah. I can't can't give people fault for trying. Yeah. 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 But that that's a good point. Anytime. Somebody, we, we become a, a bit more gentle than yeah. judgmental. Yeah. Yeah. Cause aloha. You, aloha, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Keep it aloha. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Growing up, did you ever have any struggles with your identity as a Native Hawaiian? Hmm. Did I have struggles? I mean, you come from such a strong, prominent family. I, I don't know. Pressures to like live up to your last name. No, or I don't think. You just had, you, you, you've always been sure in who you were. And what you wanted to do? For, not in what I wanted to do. I, I always knew that I was like a little bit nerdy and that <laughs> I was pretty good at school, a little bit bad at socializing. And your nerd. You yeah, that one intro nerd. Um, <laughs> and I always, I always knew that I was Hawaiian. Mm. It's like, I think also just because I look physically also very Hawaiian, it doesn't, um, the way human brains work they like sort, they just like to sort things. And mm-hmm. so physically I look like that and inside I feel like that. So it kind of, that was a privilege also. Mm-hmm. Cause I know like I have some cousins who are adopted that are like very, like they even can speak the language. They can speak a little Hawaii like really good, but they don't look Hawaiian. Mm-hmm. And so I think they struggle a lot with the, the yeah, identity. Yeah, common one. Yeah, yeah. Not looking Hawaiian. Yeah, that's so lame too. It's yeah. like, um just blood quantum in, in general is such a lame way of categorizing if somebody is mm-hmm. how much EK they have. Mm-hmm. I know so many people who aren't even Hawaiian that have so much EK. <laughs> I know. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so then, then it just comes down to your core values and yeah. your character. Yeah, I think more so. More than anything else. Yeah. That, that's, that's great. I love to hear it because mm-hmm. like you said, it, it is a privilege to have that sense of security in yeah. yourself and yeah. your culture. Because so many people struggle with that. I mean, even me, I'm like, I yeah. got the language, but I don't look the most fine. When I go to California or New York, wherever, people start speaking Spanish to me. They think I'm Mexican. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? Especially well, people if I have a see me too. In, peach fuzz. <laughs> yeah, people see me in California too, and they ask me if I'm like Puerto Rican or Latina. Latina, like, no. yeah. No. That's funny. Yeah. Did you ever get Native American when you were over there? Um... No, no, uh mostly just well because I was only in California. That's why. Oh, okay. Yeah. Maybe if I was like uh, in Arizona or oh, okay. um, p- places where there's a lot of Native people of a different culture. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, what uh, year were you at Stanford? I was. I graduated high school in 2014, so I was there from 2014 to 2018. Was Christian McCaffrey there when you were there? He was there. Oh, yeah, nice. he lived in the same. Um, when you go to Stanford, they put you in different dorms. Yeah. Um, so I went into a dorm that was called Eucalypto Mm -hmm. and then there's like a, I guess like a common eating dining, dining hall that you share. And then he was in a dorm called Ujima. So like he was in, um, the adjacent dorm for me Mm -hmm. and he would like eat. He's really nice. He's really smart. He's really nice. Oh, super smart. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. He's on, he's he's a football player. If you guys didn't guess by now, (laughs) I had him on my fantasy team last year. I had a sticker of him on my laptop or whatever. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> I would say he's as as nice and awesome uh, as a human as he is on you know, social media or whatever platform he's yeah, in. I yeah, I just see him playing a football. I've seen him on social media before, but yeah, just random fanboy question. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so what are what are your plans for the next, you know, 5, 10, 20 years? What do you hope to be doing? Space. Mm-hmm. for so people to come in. You're going to provide that for people. Maybe. Yeah. I'd like to. I'd like to kind of establish maybe like a coral nursery there. Like coral gardeners. You seen that one? Yeah, yeah I have fun. seen them. They, they, so good. I haven't met them in real life, um, but they do do some incredible work there. Um, and it's all community. A lot of scientists kind of, they don't hate on coral gardeners, but they they try to say like, oh, they're not based in, sci- in real science. They're not valid. 
But I think what they have done really well is is community engagement, mm. where they have people who maybe weren't even considering the health of the koa, like suddenly like, oh, what are you guys doing? That looks awesome. Can I do mm. that? And like, I kind of want to few maybe make a space in Kauai that combines like that energy with also the hard science. Mm-hmm. Kind of like Cliff and Hanani are kind of doing that in Hilo with another professor called John Burns. But like the only reason I'm sitting here doing the stuff I'm doing is because of them. So like opening up more space for people after me to do that too. Mm-hmm. I think in 10 years. Are you going to be the second surf scientist? I guess Cliff would be the first, yeah. The first, the first fem- you're the, you're the female. Um, yeah, first female one. Haunani is actually a very good longboarder as well. I, I, I surfed at her once at Bayfront. Yeah, yeah. She used to be on the longboarding, oh, like really? the ASP World Tour, I think, for longboarding. Yeah. So she's actually maybe the first, but she just didn't get um, the acknowledgement she should have mm. for that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's actually now that I think about. It, that's where I met Pua and the the Soto family with Haunani. Uh, no, at Bayfront. I think Haunani was there surfing too. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I think my friend knew knew her because he knows Cliff. So mm-hmm. I remember them talking, but then Pua and her family was there for something in Hilo mm-hmm. and I was out at Bayfront surfing and I just randomly met them. And that that's yeah. how I, f- I first met them. And then like a couple months later, Pua came on the podcast. That's so yeah. awesome. So super random. That's amazing. I know Hanani is actually, she's like a living encyclopedia really? <laughs> of Ike, both like Hawaiian and Western. She's also a badass navigator. She sailed the Hokulea wow. like all over the place. She's so incredibly accomplished and deserves like all the praise and all the attention because she's so smart. Yeah, where's she from? She is from, she grew up I think in either Kailua or Kaneohe. Oh, okay. Somewhere in Ko'olaupoko. And then Cliff is from Hilo. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Super cool. Yeah. Oh, that's a power couple right there. Yeah, yeah. for reals. <laughs> for reals kind. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you're going to settle back on Kauai? Yeah. Yeah. I love Kauai. Yeah. How how's so she she's just been on Oahu for what like a month maybe two months for yeah like two months two months yeah, yeah. so she she's new to the Oahu life the, the I city am. life <laughs> I'm a little bit of a bumpkin yeah <laughs> no I'm not a bumpkin so yeah it's, and, yeah and you you know a lot of people here already right? yeah, yeah, yeah 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 like uh, Moana I've known Moana forever since we were little Except she's far <laughs> yeah she's far no nah, she's not th- I'm like someone who's like fine with driving oh, what? like rambling I, I, I don't like my 15 minute commute to f45 in the morning oh really <laughs> <laughs> no yeah well, it's so. actually like 30 or 40 minute now with the traffic yeah. with the, at uh yeah i know i think i noticed that because when i was going to the lab space before school started it only took me like yep. 20 minutes and mm-hmm. suddenly it's like an hour and 15 minutes and i'm like what yep, yep what yep. happened because yeah, we're, we're coming from the same road yeah yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the worst i actually i go through waimanalo what? Well, yeah, oh, most oh, you, of the you time. Go, you go the other I go the yeah, other yeah, way yeah. because, yeah, if I don't have to be deadlocked in like four lanes of traffic and it feels like I'm moving, even it's though I'm route, going too. slower. Yeah. I, and Kauai only has one lane one way <laughs> and one lane the other way. So it feels like, I'm like, oh, it feels like I'm at home a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. All cool. the poly there and like, feels like Kauai. Yeah. Yeah. What is one piece of advice you'd like to give to some keiki coming up? Maybe mm-hmm. even... Female surfers, female entrepreneurs, female scholars mm-hmm. um, that are, you know, just wondering how, how they can get to where you're at mm-hmm. these days in the sense of, you know, the accomplishment coming from a small town, mm-hmm. having great education and now, you know, working on your PhD. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do, how do you get past the doubts and the haters? And Oh, gosh. You know, well, you just that. have to, you got to fail. Like uh, maybe you try and you don't even fail and you're like, yes, I'm a hammer. Mm. <laughs> like I hope that's your route. <laughs> but if you try and you fail, um, when you try again and you succeed, then you know beyond the shadow of a doubt, like I belong here. I can do this. And I might be better at this because of my perspective than anybody else is. Mm-hmm. That's when you, that's when you know and that, that confidence can never be taken away from you. So as you as you gain more confidence, you're more willing to try harder and harder things. So awesome. that's, yeah, just, just keep trying. What she just said. Just give them. Yeah. <laughs> even, <laughs> even if you're not sure. Yeah, 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 100%. Yeah. So what is something you wish people knew about you that they don't? Mm. Maybe something people misunderstand about you. You just like people to know. Ah. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what people misunderstand about me. 
I'm actually super nerdy. <laughs> I think that's pretty apparent already. Actually, I might not even have to say that. I can. I feel like I can tell by the way you just say that. Yeah. You, 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 yeah. You, you you say you say you emphasize the nerdy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when you say I'm super nerdy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think like people maybe um. That brings peace. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sounds like you gotta join the Maluhia Corps. <laughs> Yeah, the Peace Corps. <laughs> oh my gosh, no, no. It's, it's, your, no name that says is not... it, your name says that you have to. You know you can join as a couple too. Oh. So I, I hope Benji's ready to join. Good God. Yeah. I don't know if Benji would do I'm that. I'm going to message him and recruit him. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't even know if I would do that. Peace Corps is not peaceful. Peace it Corps can is, be. It can be, yeah. but it can be we are half mm-hmm. the time. Access to healthcare yeah, is, is something huge. Yeah, we don't think about. Yeah. Like for example, here we're probably... 15, 10, 15 minutes away from the closest hospital yeah. at almost all times, depending where you live. Mm-hmm. Um, or like some sort of medic, Medicare. Mm-hmm. My second uh, month of training in Madagascar, I had appendicitis. No so way. So I had to go to the hospitals, but I was eight hours away from the, the hospital. That could I be like a... Four, four yeah. hours, I had to wait for the ambulance and then the ambulance had to drive four hours back. That's crazy. Yeah. So I'm lucky that it didn't rupture and... Yeah, I'm still alive, but yeah, it's just simple stuff like that. Simple stuff like four that. Hour, imagine being four hours away from a hospital. I know. <laughs> and that's like, like something that could be easily fixable here could be a death sentence there. Mm-hmm. And yeah. that level of privilege is like something you won't understand until you go to like the Peace Corps, you go to a space that's so different from ours where you just have your whole world rocked. Yeah. That's why traveling is such a great Traveling feature. is really important. Mm-hmm. That's where when I say I think I've learned more from the ocean sometimes mm-hmm. in Stanford, it's because of the opportunities I've had from surfing to travel. Mm-hmm. Awesome. And as well, like in Papua New Guinea, there was a girl, I think she was from West Papua, but it was a lot of times there's no education in any of the villages. So sometimes if a village is either lucky enough that they choose their village, um, they'll fly... Like they'll helicopter a teacher to their village once a week and that teacher will give them like like classwork to work on and then they return the next week and then they discuss. But this girl was like, she must be a genius because she got so advanced in Western studies that um, they kept sending this teacher out even though a lot of other people, she was like the only person in the class. But then she had never left her village before ever and she got on a truck or what, what was it that she, it was time for her to go to college. So she walked like four days to come out of the jungle. Then she hitchhiked like another like eight hours into the main city um, in Papua New Guinea called Port Moresby. Hmm. And like, that was the first time she had seen like any kind of Western conveniences of any sort. And it was like, it, when I think about like how I, I had a hard time initially when I went to Stanford, I'm like, that girl must have had it 50 times harder and like not never really seeing a computer and then suddenly like having to work with all these tools is like and overcoming that is crazy yeah like that is straight genius level to me imagine somebody seeing an elevator escalator for the first time i know i know or even just like like maybe like boba or like weird foods (laughs) where you're like what is this yeah microwave microwave all these like modern conveniences um and then we realized, like, people complain about going to school. Oh, I have to go to school. I have to do this. But, like, people, she walked mm-hmm. four days through the jungle to go, yeah. to, to go to school. Yeah. So people walk miles just to get people to school. People walk miles. Yeah. So we are really lucky. Like, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. That's, that's, yeah. That's just a very good perspective. Okay. So before we end the podcast, mm-hmm. I got to know, what is your life hack? Were you able to oh, think yeah. of one? Yeah. I think my, I, my life hack now... Um, My dad has been really active his whole life and he super active, super healthy lifestyle otherwise, but there's like a strong history of diabetes and like um, stroke in my, my family on the, on the Kanaka side. And so both my, my tutu and my tutu Kane had issues with that and that's how they passed away. So for my dad, I kind of was like, oh, he's going to break that intergenerational curse (laughs) because he was so active but he kind of ate any kind you know Mm -hmm. like he loves mac salad he loves like lnl he loves um it's hard not to it's hard not to i i I love love that i love that stuff too (laughs) i have like that same bad habit where like i used to grind anything but then my dad ended up like getting pretty sick and so now he has to go on like a 
pretty healthy, healthy-ish diet. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing all kinds of research about like how to eat like our kupuna would have eaten, things that are foods that are good and healthy and digestible for Hawaiian people. Um, and I've been trying it with him because like as a support system nice. for like, I know it's hard for you to, <laughs> to give up your max salad and all kind, but um, you're not doing it alone. Mm-hmm. And actually I've felt so much better. Like I try to eat really simple stuff now, like not no try to not eat the processed food too much. Um, try to not like, uh, what do you call? Like I used to grind candy a lot. Try to not eat processed food. Try Mm -hmm. to not eat so much sugar. Um, trying to incorporate like ulu or, um, kalo, like a lot more fish, a lot more, you know, less rice, all that Mm -hmm. kind. And eating healthier, eating like how our kupuna would have eaten makes me feel a lot better. Mm -hmm. Like actually, um, so yeah, life hack is to the best of your ability, try to eat well and put good things into your body because yeah. you kind of have better, I have more energy. I get less tired. Um, I sleep better. I exercise better. Um, health is wealth. Health is wealth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. It's a good reminder, especially when you get older. You, yeah. You, your body's not the same. Yeah, it is yeah. not. <laughs> right on. So I got my last fast fade five questions. Yeah, my yeah. Uh, laptop actually died, so oh, I, that's I took okay. a, but I took a picture on my phone right before it died. I mm-hmm. came prepared. I was like, oh, he remembered. Oh, yeah. no wonder you were taking that. Oh, picture. you saw that, yeah. I saw that. It's like, why is he on his phone mid podcast? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so fav- no, no, I didn't think that. I was just like, oh, <laughs> he probably has to remember something really important. Yeah. 